My name is Marcos and this is Self Psychology. Today we're going to talk about breathing exercises. I'm going to show you how to do three different breathing exercises that will help with your anxiety. These exercises, as you will see, are very good to do before you have any sort of crisis. Whether it's a panic attack or an anxiety attack or just feel overwhelmed and stressed. So it's a good idea to practice these before the fact so that when you're in a crisis situation you have a tool, you have something that you can use that you're familiar with. Now these breathing exercises have a couple of other things that are, are good for you. The first thing it's been studied that when you practice regular breathing exercises like diaphragmatic breathing, there's a chemical, uh, there's a chemical in the that helps minimize general anxiety. So if you're one of these people that suffer from general anxiety, just practicing a breathing exercise in your own time when you're not in a, any sort of crisis is a good idea to just minimize the uh, overall anxiety feeling. The other good thing about breathing exercises is that it's a meditative kind of balance, equilibrium type of exercise that gets you back into a, like I said, an equilibrium. Because a lot of times what happens is that we're stressed, whatever the stress may be, whether it's anxiety or job related, feeling overwhelmed by different tasks. It helps us balance ourselves out and be, uh, be at a more balanced equilibrium state. I'm sorry. Third, a good idea uh, of these breathing exercises, another benefit of the breathing exercise is that it helps minimize your inner dialogue. So by focusing on your breathing, and sort of kind of distracting yourself from this inner dialogue. It brings you back into the present moment so that you can be aware of what's going on around you and not what's, uh, what's in your head, uh, which is usually things that have already passed or things that are upcoming in the future. So why don't we just jump right in. And the first exercise I wanna to talk to you about is called diaphragmatic breathing. Now diaphragmatic breathing is when you breathe using your stomach muscles, your diaphragm, and not your chest muscles. The benefits of this is that you have more space down there. So you take to ten, take to, tend to take in more oxygen, more air that your lungs can process and get more of the benefit of the oxygen within your body. Also, again, it's a distraction. So if you're feeling uh, some sort of, if you're in some sort of crisis by focusing on your diaphragm and your breathing, it also helps to distract yourself. Now, if you recall when you were a baby or little babies, if you have any, they automatically do diaphragmatic breathing. If you look at a little baby, you see that their, their stomach goes up and down as they breathe. So, in a sense, we're born to breathe like this, but then we teach ourselves to teach with our upper body. And the truth is that the there are more benefits to diaphragmatic breathing than there are to your regular chest breathing. So again, it's a good idea to practice this when you're not in any stressful situation and, um, and then you have your tool. Now, we're gonna practice it here, okay? The first thing you want to do is you want to put one of your hands on your chest and the other one on your stomach, okay? Now, you're going to start to breathe by moving just your, the one on, your, on your, your lower arm, your lower hand, the one on your stomach. So you're going to practice breathing in and breathing out, but not, trying not to move your upper body, trying not to move your chest. Okay, now let's do a couple of repeti repetitions here and I'll show you what I mean. 
So you're breathing. Now if you notice, my, my lower hand, my stomach, is the one that's moving, not my upper body. Now I exaggerated my breathing so that you can see what's going on, you can hear what's going on, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can breathe normally, but just make sure you breathe using your stomach muscles. That's called diaphragmatic breathing, and it's a very, very good exercise for, um, for you to get more oxygen within your system. The second breathing exercise I'm going to talk about is simply focusing on your breath, okay? Now, this has many reasons, many uh, names to it, and many groups uh, practice it. But let's keep it simple. This is an exercise that I use every day, twice a day. When I wake up in the morning, I practice this breathing exercise. Before I go to sleep at night, I practice it for about an hour. Now, you, you're not expected to do that, of course. But the truth is that as you practice this and increase your time in doing this exercise, it will change your life. Now it basically goes like this. You just practice, you just focus, you close your eyes and you focus on your breathing. So you focus on your inhale, you focus on your exhale. You focus on your inhale, you focus on your exhale. And you count. You try to count 10 breaths, 10 in inhales and 10 exhales. So you will, so it will look something like this. One, two, three. Now by focusing on your breath, what you're doing is distracting yourself from any thoughts that may come through. But every so often a thought will come through and you think of something. Now what you want to do is one, not evaluate the thought, two, not judge the thought, and three, most importantly, not keep the thread going. Okay? All you're going to do with the thought is look at it. Look at it and by acknowledging that it exists, it will go away by itself. Let me give you an example of this. So I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to start focusing on my breathing. One, two, three. Now I get a thought that I need to pay my car payment and I don't have enough money in the bank to do that. So I look at the thought and I allow it to go away. And I return to one. So I don't, so I go back to one in my counting. One, two, three. Now I get a new thought that my friend hasn't called me in a couple of weeks and I'm worried what's going on with her. Now again, I don't evaluate the thought. I don't say, oh, I'm so stupid of thinking like this. So I don't judge myself. I don't evaluate the thought by saying, oh, if she would have uh, uh, been more on top of things, maybe she would have called me. Or maybe it's my, my, um, my job to call her. Most importantly, I don't keep the thread going. So I don't say, what if something did happen to her? Oh my gosh, this is going to be horrible. What time should I call her? Etc., etc., etc. I simply look at the thought without attaching anything to it and I go back to my breathing and start from one again and continue to count. One, two, three. Now the next breathing exercise I'm going to talk to you about, it's really not a breathing exercise. That's why I said there were three breathing exercises I'm going to show you today, but this is an extra. This is what you call a focus exercise. So 
this happened this is good for when you're starting to feel overwhelmed stress anxious or have some sort of crisis panic attack anxiety attack and that's by focusing on something that's in front of you so let's just say I'm in the subway and I'm starting to get anxious because there are a lot of people around me and I'm afraid that something horrible is gonna happen so I start to get anxious then I start to hyperventilate when I start to breathe heavy then I start to remember the feeling and I start to say gosh I'm gonna have a panic attack and it's gonna be horrible so now I'm getting anxious about being anxious and that loop will continue and it will continue and it will continue and of course we usually don't pass out we usually we don't die from this but we get very very scared now one of the things that I like to teach people is to focus on something that's in front of them. Now let's practice this. Right now let's just assume that I'm starting to have a panic attack. So I'm starting to think that I'm getting anxious and every time I get anxious like this I start to over breathe and I almost pass out and I'm scared that I'm gonna die. So what is it that I do? I start to focus on something in front of me. Okay? Right now what's in front of me is this camera. So I start to look at it and I start to evaluate it. I start to see the name which is right below the lens. I start to look at the lens. I start to look at the case. I see how attractive the case is with all these little buttons on it that I probably will never figure out how to use. I start to read some of the lettering on the, on the camera and look at the different straps and and cables that come off of it. So I start to look at all these things and just kind of evaluate what is it that I'm looking at. I'm not judging, I'm just looking at it. And I'm not reading, because when we're having a panic attack, it's very difficult to do anything except focus on a particular thing. So here's another exercise. This is good to practice as well, but this is more what you use when you're in a, a some sort of crisis. So you sit there, you find something in the subway or in the elevator and you start to focus on it and you start to evaluate it and take it apart. That will distract you enough to bring a space between your thoughts, okay? It will bring a space between your thoughts so that from one thought to the other so that you can actually calm yourself down okay you can have that break because when you're in this excited state you need a break and that will help you break once you break then you can do one of the other breathing exercises to really bring you down and bring you back into an equilibrium now the last breathing exercise i'm going to talk to you about is called progressive muscle relaxation it's a very good um, exercise. Again, it has been shown in studies to bring down overall anxiety. So it's a good thing to practice even if you're not anxious. And the way you do it is that you focus on one muscle group at the same at the time. You tense it and then you release it. Okay? Now, you can look this up on the internet. You can look it up at your local library. Uh, many different ways of doing it, but the, I'm going to show you the way I do it. Now basically I'm in a comfortable place and I focus on my hand. Now I make a fist and I tense it really, really hard, really, really hard for a few seconds and then I release it. Then I do the same thing with my forearm. I tense it really, really hard, really hard. I keep it for a couple of seconds and then I release it. Then I go to my shoulder and I tense my shoulder really, really hard. I keep it for a few seconds and then I release it. Now I do that for every muscle group in my body. So I'll start at my right hand and I'll go through my arm to my shoulder. I'll do my chest. I'll go down my left arm and I'll do that. Then I'll start with my left leg 
and I'll do my left leg, I'll do my, my knee, I'll do my thigh, I'll go up to my torso, I'll, um, I'll do my chest again, I'll go down to my right leg, I'll do the muscle groups there, and then I'll finish with my face. So I'll tense my face really, really hard, I'll hold on to it, and then I'll release it. And then I'll stay there and I'll just breathe after I've done that exercise and take it all in. Now mind you, that last exercise, progressive muscle relaxation, should take about 20 minutes. Okay? So since I'm doing this video and it has to be really quick and I'm teaching you several things, I'm going to go quick. But what I'd like you to do is to practice this exercise but practice it very slowly so that it'll take you 20 minutes to do an entire body. This is also a very good exercise to do when you're having trouble sleeping. All of the breathing exercises I've, I've mentioned to you are very good to do when you're having trouble sleeping. You're lying in bed and you do the exercise and before you're even done, you notice that you're asleep. Okay? Well, I hope this was helpful. Someone brought to my attention that I didn't talk about breathing exercises as a practical exercise to, um, to anxiety. So I dedicated a, a podcast for this because it is very important. Keep the emails coming. Live healthy and live happy. And I'll see you here next time.